if you are still using this for chest decompression, please stop. And in a moment, I'll give you three reasons why. My name is Alex Hepner, and this is Group Call. I've seen reports of damaging the cannula before even inserting it into the patient's chest because the packaging is difficult to open, especially if the clinician is stressed or wearing gloves covered in blood. Plus, a growing number of reports indicate that clinicians often forget to remove the cap from the cannula, uh, making the entire procedure of chest decompression completely ineffective. There are some good recent studies addressing the average thickness of the chest wall, and I will link all of them below. To quickly summarize, for the second intercostal space mid-clavicular line, thickness varies between studies from 26 mm to 42 mm median, and for the fourth, fifth anterior axillary line, from 18 to 34 mm median. The problem is that uh, most of these studies were conducted on uh, either uh, non-traumatic patients or volunteers. And why it's important? Because in trauma, the body inflammatory response can cause swelling in soft tissue, making the injured area temporarily thicker. Plus, tissue is naturally expandable to some extent. So a short cannula may just stretch the tissue instead of penetrating it. The bottom line is that the orange cannula might have adequate length for some patients, but because chest wall thickness varies, it's better to have a longer device to ensure it works for all patients' demographics. The chest wall contains multiple muscles, including the pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, uh, serratus anterior, and intercostal muscles. After you insert the cannula, here he sound and withdrawn the needle, the plastic catheter of the orange cannula left in the body can easily kink due to muscle spasm, making the procedure ineffective. Also, the port of the cannula cannot be really stabilized effectively, making it prone to dislodging. Yes, I've heard about using a uh, tape roll, then more tape, and then more tape for stabilization, but really, are we still improvising? It's the 21st century. Besides, how well does your tape stick to sweaty or bloody skin? So, what should we be using? Maybe let's just follow TC3, PHTLS, and ITLS guidelines and use dedicated needles. I'll show you what I use and what you should avoid buying. But before that, I want to disclose no conflict of interest. I was not paid to show you these products. This is the needle I use. This is a Numo Dart by Titec. It's not only easy to open, but also has a mechanism that alerts me if I insert the needle too deep. Now watch closely. As I pierce the skin and tissue, notice the green indicator is in the upward position. Boom, the indicator goes downwards signalizing that I'm in the plural space. As the needle touches the balloon, it does not pop. If it didn't pop the balloon, it shouldn't puncture the heart. And now, warning on what not to buy. This is a different needle from Titec and a counterfeit I found online. Take a look at the comparison. The counterfeit is thinner and its plastic catheter is softer, therefore potentially prone to kinking. Please buy original medical devices. If you are interested in the pathophysiology of tension neurotrax, watch this video. And if you want to see the most extreme test of tourniquets, watch this one. My name is Alex Hepner, and this was Group Call.